A very warm welcome to Arthur Turner. We will be talking coaching today. Great. <laughs> <laughs> a broad term, I think, and potentially overused uh, and probably potentially misunderstood too, I think. Um, before we dive in, figure out what, what coaching is and it, how it can help our audience, um, over to you for a, a, a brief intro about you and your background and what you do. Oh my goodness. Um, okay, I'm, um, I suppose primarily I'm a senior lecturer at the University of the West of England, although I came to that um, august place rather late in my life and have wandered around um, uh, via botany, um, uh, leadership and other things. So I, I've started off uh, as a botanist, but I've moved around and then gradually settled on leadership. And I suppose I was uh, inspired to look at the, the, the coaching side of leadership, if you like, by a course that I did in 2008, um, which um, uh, taught me the, the, the marvellous kind of field that you've got to, when you're engaging in, particularly executive coaching. But um, uh, that's probably as, is that enough? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now we know each other because um, I'm, I'm currently studying for uh, uh, an Institute of Leadership and Management um, certificate in executive coaching. And I started off this <laughs> this call by saying it's an often used but essentially misunderstood subject in that we have sports coaches, we have executive coaches, I think we have a different understanding in the United States uh, uh, mm -hmm. compared to the UK of what coaching is. I have on my website and my company name is Digital Agency Coach and probably true coaching is, is only 20%, 25% of of what I do. So my first question to you, Arthur, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. Uh, what is coaching? Oh my goodness. Uh, I've said that twice now. Oh my goodness! Um, I, I think that the, the, the uh, yeah the broad definition, I, I guess, is it fits into this field of a kind of a helper, I suppose. And I quite like um, um, some um, more august uh, academics than I am. Um, you know, talked about the idea of kind of it's a natural process, and that we are we're we're experiencing. A kind of the end of thousands of years of evolution of, of people helping one another. And one of those forms, I guess, is the uh, kind of you and me, maybe round a fire, you know, uh, chatting about things. So it's, it's definitely in my mind a helping process. Now, for some people, it's, 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 it can be a bit formulaic. I suppose there are some forms of coaching uh, that make it so that, you know, in this hour and a half, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z via this model. And, and, and I, you're already familiar with those um, things um, via the, the program. But, but quickly you learn, I think, that also uh, it's a helping space. It's between two people. It's, it's collaborative. So the idea that, that uh, both parties are learning. And there is a, 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 a dusting, if I can be so bold, of, of creativity in that space to make it a, an engaging, lively pleasant place to be very very familiar to those of you who've got a, a best friend maybe you know that that kind of warm human relationship um that, that's probably where i say i am with coaching although though there are many ways in which you can add a name to you know nlp coach a gestalt coach a life mm. coach a, um which i'm not that that fond of really but it it certainly sits into this um building a trusting relationship with someone else by which you learn and develop and grow. I suppose. Okay. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to set the context um, in regards to our audience here. And then I'm going to ask you, so I'll give you a little bit of time to think about it, think mm -hmm. about the answer. Um, the next question will be what, what is coaching not perhaps in, in this particular scenario? So a lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of my audience here, they are, um, they're technicians by trade, you know, so they run creative agencies. They started mm -hmm. the agency by being, being good at the thing, you know, whether that thing is digital marketing or writing software or being a designer or, you know, being a video producer, something like that. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden they find themselves with a business, you know, it's not just them in a bedroom <laughs> doing the thing anymore. They've got a team of 10, 15, 20, yeah. 50 people. They've mm -hmm. got no MBA behind them. 
they've got a, a team of technicians, all right? So they have, they're managing and leading people that, that they were once like themselves. And all of a sudden they're finding themselves having to, to lead and manage. Um, and they have their team of technicians bringing them issues, bringing them challenges, looking for solutions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So in the yeah. context of these businesses, you know, it's it's a master baker running a bakery with 20 other bakers <laughs> in the team uh, asking questions about how we can make better bread. Um, in that context, what do you think coaching is and isn't perhaps? Uh, well, well, I'll start with, with your invitation to say what it is not, I think. Um, I mean, firstly, it's not... not um, not about giving advice, mm. and I think that's that's one of the things where it is it, you can see it starkly move away from kind of more management type ideas. So it's certainly not giving advice, although even the most experienced coach flirts with this sometimes, where there kind of is a, <laughs> an overwhelming desire to say something that's about what I used to do or what I did, uh, but it should be firmly resisted, I, I think. Um, the second thing is not it's not to do with the hierarchy, and I and I really like uh, if I'm forgiven for for adding a bit of theory to this. You know, uh, um, there's an excellent book. It's a couple of years old, called written by Garvey, Garvey, Stokes, and Meganson, and I really like it for that title. Let alone uh, or the the authors rather than anything else. Uh, but they they offer the, the idea of co coaching. You know that that it, it, the minute you are offering coaching. You're, you're kind of doing it to yourself as well, kind of this this uh, collaborative. And so therefore, um, it isn't about I'm slightly better than you, which is why I'm here. Uh, and it's certainly not, in most cases, to do with actually you're not very good and I'm a little bit better. Uh, so I'm going to, you know, nudge you, advise you, drag you towards a better performance. Um, uh, and that, that, that probably is the... Yeah, you know, those three things are kind of really sure. what it isn't. Um, and probably I'd add, if I can, um, that it's not about models. So it's not about um, a structure that someone else gives you. It is something that, that is co-created. Um, and for that, that's where it gets its energy from. Um, because, mm -hmm. it, you know, if you're really good at it, you, you, the person you're working with, your co coachee um, feels that energy and that support and that space that you've created for them to okay. develop and grow. All right. So really good, really clear distinction, um, I think. It's not about giving advice, all right? So I'm a, I'm a creative agency owner or a master baker. One of my guys comes to me. I'm really busy. They're really busy. Janusz, I've got this issue. Um, help me to fix it. And... You know, like you say, I think our natural tendency is to dive in there and, mm. and give the advice because I know I can give the advice to solve the problem and the problem will be solved in five seconds. All right. Why should we not in that scenario give the advice and what benefit does that bring to the to the coachee, to the person that, that we're working with? Uh, well, well, first of all, I challenge you about, you know, that the, I know what to do. You know, so that if you're the the, the point, the, 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 <laughs> Fair you know, the, not you personally, but you know, the idea that that um, oh, oh, I've I've seen this before. I know what this is. Um, yeah. Whereas, um, uh, you know, say for instance, you studied um, hoverflies, for example, you know, and you said, well, uh, a hoverfly is a you know thing that hovers, and it's usually black and yellow. Um, and you can be guided, well, that over there, that's a hoverfly. But then you realize that there's kind of 250 species of hoverfly in Britain alone. And then you begin to think, oh, well, how, am I sure I've got that hoverfly right? Or uh, do I know what flower it's heading towards or how it breeds or what? Well, so. And so there is that, that um, um, issue in, in my mind, which I quite like this little rhythmic, rhymey thing that I've got in my head. You know, it's the individual within the context in which they work. So, so both those things are unique, you know, and the combination of them is unique. So it's an impossibility to know what to do. And it's a false friend, really, you know, that thing about saying, oh, oh, yeah, I know what to do. Um, and of course, the, 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 the coaching relies on being able to say to someone, okay, tell me, tell me a bit more about that. You know, tell me what, what it is that's going on with your particular loaf of bread in your particular this morning. 
And therefore, it tells you to be humble and say, well, I, I, I can't know what is going on. So maybe, uh, and this links to another bit of leadership theory from Keith Grint, and you, uh, some of your listeners may have heard of the kind of the idea of wicked problems. And wicked problems are things you don't know anything about, particularly. Um, the kind of um, the unique set of circumstances I just referred to. And Keith Grint says what you need is collaboration, which links to the idea of co-coaching. And you need questions, not answers. Because somehow or the other, through that evolution of a thousand years around the fireside, you know, the human beings and human types have responded to questions much better than answers. Okay. All right. All right. So I might not know all of the answers. In fact, probably won't. <laughs> In that, uh, as, as a manager, I've, I've seen similar situations, but this context this is unique. This yeah. person mm -hmm. within this environment is yeah. unique. Just going a little bit deeper on that then and, and questions. What does, so if I respond with a question and get the person that I'm managing or leading, I, and I interrogate them and I ask them questions. What does that, what benefit does that bring in, in them? Ahead of me again, just ad, advising them. Well, the, the questions don't come alone. And, and I suppose that if you're used to interrogation, <laughs> you know, that, you know, the, the machine gun worth of questions that might drive people, um, to giving you a kind of blase answer. You've also, with questions, you've got to have a bit of space and silence to allow the person mm. to think. So again, and in, in an evolutionary sense, human beings, at least as what I understand, uh, around you know how many different cultures there are in human beings, um, is that we have solved lots of problems by putting our heads together, not necessarily literally, but but combining the powers of our brains. And of course, if you tell someone what to do, or you make them feel they don't know what to do, or you make them feel that you know better their brains will be less active and they'll, and you've seen it in individuals, I'm sure I have, you know, they, mm. they, they become resigned to the fact they can't, well, what's the point? So they don't engage their brains with the person who's managing their particular work uh, at that particular moment. And of course you lose the power of those two brains or three brains or four brains or, or teams worth of brains. And therefore, you almost before you've even done all that, the person must trust you that you're not going to uh, humiliate them or laugh at them or so on. So building trust and building a degree of, of understanding with that fellow human being is really important, even before you get to the place where you start to ask questions or you start to say, so mm. tell me a bit more about that. Yeah. I like I like the idea of that concept. I've never thought about it before in that we have, um, you know, human capital within the business. Like you say, we have mm -hmm. three, four, five, six brains. Mm -hmm. um, and as a as an advisor and a technician, as a manager, the tendency is to say, actually, mine is the only brain <laughs> that, that we're going to leverage. Yeah, yeah, um, sure. mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And I'm going to transmit this through you, whereas there's a collective battery, <laughs> you know, of, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. of power, to be honest. Yeah, I think, I okay, think that's, all right. yeah, I think that's a really important factor, you know, because there is, there is beyond individual coaching, there's also the idea of working with a team and, and being a sort of team coach as well. But that, but I don't want to move away from the paired question you asked me first. <laughs> and, um, all right. So it's about, uh, enabling, um, a team, I think, to enabling is maybe not the right word. I'm sure they're very, uh, able to, to think for themselves, but we're just creating the space and time for that for that mm -hmm. thinking to happen, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, for our team to become more engaged, rather than reliant and dependent on us as a, a as a manager for the answers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, how do we do it? <laughs> how do we coach? <laughs> well, so so there, there there is a although I I kind of um, was faintly critical of the idea of working with models there are kind of a, a way in which you can begin to understand the process so there is a process going on because you haven't got infinity you haven't got all the time in the world to do these things and any good coaching session is limited by time brain fatigue and of course the other 
really important thing is to to learn through action. So that's why um, coaching becomes similar to for those of your listeners who who know about action learning, the idea of that you there's no learning without action, there's no action without learning. So so the the conversation and the questions need to be appended by well you know what are you going to do? You know, what is it you were going to do? Um, yeah. Um, so I think okay. uh, so that so that's a kind of important process. And I was just thinking um, as my mind drifted around this this subject is the idea of you know using a clock as a kind of inst- instrument of understanding this. And it may be a bit raw, rough and ready, but I'll, I'll give it a go anyway. So the idea of, you know, you start at 12 and you go around to 12, you know, and at, at, at 12 o'clock, you've got this thing called rapport. So you're, you build it at the beginning and you build it at the end. You know, so the human element, the emotional human element, you know, how are you today? What are you doing the weekend? Those kind of um, triggers about building a little bit of something around uh, the person you're working with. And then you might do, so what are we going to do? So there's the idea of contracting. Um, how long are we going to do it for? Um, and what, uh, and then the kind of idea, so what's the purpose of, the, of this conversation? So it doesn't need huge amounts of time. And, and you've experienced this, uh, you know, excuse about the kind of the idea of, you know, 20 minutes is useful. <laughs> you can do this in a reasonable piece of time. And then you, Round sort of four, five, six, seven, eight o'clock on the clock as you, as your as the hands spin round, you're thinking about all those things that are not to do with giving advice. So you're thinking about reframing, uh, echoing, uh, silence, questions, and probably the most difficult thing when you're under business pressure is the idea of listening, you know, spending enough time listening, which then leads you to around nine, ten, eleven o'clock of doing so maybe recapping or checking out with your co-coach what it is you heard what it is that's that's actually going on to get to okay so so what are you going to do so the end of the process or that particular chunk of the process is so what are you going to do not what i'm going to do what are you going to do Um, and what does that look like you know when who with um, which then builds you to saying okay that was a really pleasant 20 minutes and, and you just say you know Mm. Uh, have you had a coffee break yet? Are you okay? How's your wife? How's your partner? Whatever it might be. So that you, uh, and I know that's a bit clumsy because in the middle is the, these hands spinning around, which, which is, which I would put, um, I would write in, in black pen, reflective space, because you need a space to do this kind of so what question all the time. That's so easy when you're busy or you're running a business or you've just, Mm-hmm. got a big contract or something is to think that action is the only thing but also is taking a deep breath and saying right so what have we done here and what am i thinking and what am i learning about uh, because that seems to be important for both parties in this yeah yeah um arthur i'm going to ask you i've just noticed that your uh, your microphone i think is rubbing against your beard and we're getting a lot of uh scratchy right. sounds <laughs> ah right um it's, it's yeah. a common problem um, it's me shaking my head around what, what do you want me to do <laughs> i don't know maybe <laughs> put it away i don't know i don't know um okay uh all right i th- i think i mean that that's huge two, two things you just mentioned there um one is the action piece at the end all right and it's something i think that i see as a, as a huge gap with a lot of creative agencies because they're often, and this isn't all of them, you know, we're so rushed, so fast paced. There's an ambiguity in the gap that exists between manager and team member. You know, mm-hmm. we've had mm-hmm. a conversation about ABC and I'm, I've presumed actually that, that we've both understood ABC and actually what, you know, communication is two ways. It's listening and what's been heard by employee is, you know, BDE, <laughs> a BCD, yeah. mm-hmm. sorry. <laughs> you know, so th- there's a gap there and that, that confirmation, that action piece at the end provides an opportunity just to clarify that ambiguity, I think. And like you say, really solidify the next steps in the action in the, in the, um, in the mind of the coachee, you know, to, yeah. to decide so what happens just, next. Yeah. So, so the, and of course this, this idea of, of owning it, you know. Um, yeah. So that A, I'm not going to get into trouble if I do take some action. Um, yeah. And, and B, that, that I will take some time to, to hover around what I've just done in order to learn about it, you know, because yeah. Yeah. Uh, we are all frail 
and human and make yeah. mistakes and things like that. Yeah. And the reflection piece as well. I mean, it is often, it's the, you know, it's the last thing that is given attention to, I think. Quite often, again, creative agencies, they make space for post-project reviews or post-client wash-ups or retrospectives, I think we call them. But they're very few are methodical with them and, and, and make it a space in which it will always happen. You know, it's, I think we appreciate the value of it, of mm. sitting back, thinking, reflecting, you know, uh, and learning from and then taking action on that reflection at the same time. I, I think also, um, and you're right to emphasize this, that, that guided by a coach or your coach, um, you can get to a place where reflection doesn't take that long. You know, so, so I think people fear it because they think it, you know, um, whatever expression you might use, nasal, navel gazing and or something like that, <laughs> um, is not what it is. And, and, and you can teach yourself five minutes worth of reflection in a way that is reasonably structured. Um, uh, some people like a particularly kind of uh, like the idea of a, a reflective journal. So, uh, you know, or using a diary. And, and it's like, um, I would say that both those things are like flossing your teeth, you know, that when you first get asked to do it, it's really difficult to get, get it into a habit of your life. But apparently, what does it take 13 times to do it? And then you're back into, you know, you're, you're into a routine and a habit. And I think that that's exactly what reflective practice feels like mm -hmm. in a way. It's really, really good for you, but I just need to make it as a pattern that, uh, yeah. particularly uh, you know in a hierarchical sense that your manager or your manager's manager doesn't assume you've fallen asleep because you're quietly <laughs> contemplating what you've just done and i hope um i've restricted my head movements sufficiently so i don't crackle when i'm talking <laughs> it's much better um Good. Uh, okay so a bit a bit of a summary i think of where we are so what, what coaching is um, it's, I, th I think you use the word, it's, it's a helping mechanism. Mm -hmm, it's not mm -hmm, advice mm -hmm. giving. Mm -hmm. We're enabling or creating the space and time, um, for our team, our employees to think and act for themselves and to kind of harness that collective human capital that we have within the business yeah. rather than being dependent on the, you know, the single the, yeah. the manager mm -hmm. leader, mm -hmm. the stuff we can do, it's about questions and open questions and using silence so that the person that we're speaking to can think yep. for themselves, um, creating space for reflection, clarifying what, what the action is. All right. So the final theme before we, um, before we wrap up is what's the benefit to the organization? So if I take two businesses, exactly, you know, I, I take a carbon copy of the, uh, the bakery. All right. So I have, Bakery number one, 20 employees, and it's 19 bakers and a master baker. I'm going to carbon copy it. And bakery number one continues down the path of the master baker giving giving advice. Every time that there are his employees mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. faced with a problem, he steps into advice given. And we take carbon copy bakery number two, who engages and adopts a, a more coaching mindset and invests that time because it sounds like it takes more time potentially to... To, to go through that approach or invest the time in the initial stages of a coaching engagement to work your way around the clock, perhaps. What's the benefits that we could expect to see if that manager is a, you know, is able to, <laughs> to, to coach well? What, what might the second bakery look like compared to the first? Um, I mean, it's difficult to conjecture, but I, I, I'll have a go at this. I mean, I think the, the atmosphere would be different. So, so that the, the, the energy within that organization would be more buoyant, I, I suppose is a word that I'd use, because I think, you know, one of the most stressful things about, um, according to the research, is, you know, a lack of control. So if you're in a place where, you know, your minutest um, actions are going to be controlled or criticized or uh, countermanded by a, a big boss, it's likely that you're going to, you know, be pretty dull about it and you probably will come up with fewer and fewer uh, ideas to help that business thrive and it might be because you you crave a bit of independence and a bit of autonomy that you might start to look at leaving you know, leaving that organization so so i would think the the turnover of, of of 
the first uh, hierarchical bakery would be much bigger. It'd be a sadder place to be in. Uh, the manager would probably have to keep repeatedly teaching people to do things and get dragged into operational issues rather than strategic issues, um, which he or she would be better with their time. And of course, then once you've kind of freed people's mind from the, the shackles of being told what to do, it's likely that they, and particularly when they work together, uh, plugging in their brains, would be able to perhaps come up with, actually, I've thought about this. Um, perhaps if we did it this way, if we mixed the water in this way or we made it lukewarm or we you know, filtered water or whatever it might be, that that would make the process better. And, and this has, you know, you've seen good examples because I think that's what's been happening with the vaccines, you know, that instead of a kind of a hierarchical plod through, well, it will take us 10 years and we'll have to do it this way. They've had over, you know, Skype and Zoom and other things, um, a kind of a reaction of go, well, what do you think? Could you, could we do it this way? Or which way? how do you do this? Um, mm. Or what is the thing we're trying to solve? Well, you know, pandemic and no vaccine. So how do we make, how do we do it quicker? And that, I think a lot of that was based not just on expertise. Of course, there was oodles of that, but on the idea of asking questions about and, and posing questions about the structure that was already there. You know, why don't we do these trials in parallel? Oh, no, I hadn't thought of that. Okay. Um, so, so locking people together and it does have some, so you can go back to the links of, of, of kind of developmental management, maybe where the idea is, you know, delegating with a bit of support, giving people some scope to do it their way. So you're not too precious about whether your baking tin faces north to south rather than east to west, you know, all these kind of things <laughs> uh, seem to me be really important. Uh, and that can be unleashed by someone who's, you know, calm, uh, p positive. So, so that, that links very much with the coach sort of saying, well, you know, it was a really good session. I was really helpful and I, you know, got a lot out of that to, to feel that kind of positivity and apply that to their workplace. So there'd be more loads mm -hmm. being bought, uh, more loads being, more different range, you know, coping with sourdough r rather than seeded, you know, th these things would develop. <laughs> I'm getting there into this the bakery sour, thing. Yeah. Sa yeah, in the age of sourdough, that's a key benefit. We get more sourdough. <laughs> yeah, a, right. a, a, a business that coaches gets more yeah. better sourdough. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's the key benefit. Coaching makes sourdough. <laughs> right right there. <laughs> there we go. That's the title for the uh, for this interview. Yeah, um, okay. I mean, those themes are huge. The, those that you just mentioned um, with our audience. So, uh, a more engaged team with lower employee churn. Like recruitment is a big challenge at the moment there's, there mm. isn't enough talent around so just being able to hold on to employees for longer is is massive having those that team i think you know be more positive be more in, engaged um be more challenging you know mm. of mm -hmm. of the status quo and the way things have done leads to better i better ideas and, and better solutions yeah. and more sourdough like you've said more freeing up the the business owner to, to focus on the strategic stuff and not get dragged into operation issues. These are, you know, these are these are all core themes um, yeah. that, that my audience are facing right now. So I think um, they're really relevant. And I and I think what's what's weird about it is that, that it's begu looks beguilingly simple, you know. So so <laughs> uh, if people have asked me in the past, so what, what do you do, Arthur? And I you know, said, so, well, I ask one or two questions and I keep quiet. <laughs> and it is it is isn't it you know it is we often f feel the need and actually having been on the receiving end of um some coaching recently um where you know th that time to think the space the silence to sit back and not having somebody else you know fill that space for you does just take you into a more creative kind of solution oriented space i think and absolutely space. yeah yeah, um, Arthur, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you so nice. much. It, it's um, been a real, it's uh, been a joy to, to have this space with you as well. So thank you so much. Yeah. No, thank you. Really relevant, super powerful, I think. Um, uh, coaching, you know, tons of benefits for creative agencies and, and, and more sourdough at, at the end of it. <laughs> what's, what's not to love? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, um, uh, I, you know, let me know how, uh, what reaction you get. Cause I, cause I hope it's, um, it certainly feels like a positive conversation that, that people can get yeah. a lot out of. So thank you. Absolutely.